Hey guys, Elysian Castaic here, and we're going to be going over a little bit of a rendering tutorial for Minecraft characters. This is mostly going to be for a team of animators and render artists that I am currently working with on two different servers. For those of them who are having some trouble with getting the rig to work and other things like that. We're starting off in an empty scene. Uh, I've already deleted the default cube. I've adjusted my render to using cycles render and I'm going to automatically change myself to material view and that's pretty much all we have there would have been a default light but I got rid of that too I left the camera in because it's always useful to have a camera that way you don't have to add it later so the first thing that we're going to do is going to make sure that we have the proper uh, rig downloaded and my team should already have this the rig that I'm using is the black plasma studios rig uh, I will leave a link to that in the description if and only if this video goes on YouTube, which I'm not sure currently if I will do that or not. However, if it is on YouTube and you're watching it right now, make sure you check the description and get the rig. Uh, there will be two links. One is for the Black Plasma Studios rig. One is for the Rim Denise rig or whatever the hell it's spelled, uh, pronounced. And that has rigs for items, mobs, uh, blocks, and all kinds of other crazy assortments of good goodies. Uh, they even have their own Minecraft rig. It's a little bit more complicated than the one that I'm going to be using right now, and it's a pain in the butt to make 1.8 textures work with it. So we're going with the Black Plasma Studios rig, which only works with 1.8 skins, and it's the only one that I uh, allow myself to use anymore. It's a little tricky to get it into the scene first off, uh, but I'm going to go over that with you right now. First thing, go to File, Pen, find where you extracted the Black Plasma Studios rig, Go into the first file, black plasma rig dot blend. Go to object, highlight everything. Now, it the people who created this rig recommended to turn off active layer. I've noticed no difference in if you deactivate it or not. Now you got your little guy here. We zoom in, you'll see that he's completely white. There's nothing about nothing on him. Basically, entity three hundred three. So there's this little guy floating above his left shoulder. And there's a bigger guy over on the right shoulder. We'll get to him in a little while. Uh, and if you get this auto run disabled error, just hit ignore. Right click on the little silhouette of the guy. You'll get this little thing over here that looks like a sphere with a checkerboard pattern on it. Click on that. That's your materials tab. Should automatically default to this pink ball, which is skin. And come down here and hit open. Now go to wherever your skins are. And I have a special skin that is called my render skin. Now what this has, it has no eyes and no mouth and no eyebrow. Because the rig comes with its own 3D versions. And it's actually very easy to get uh, different sized eyes in this. So if you're worried about having 2 pixel high eyes or 3 pixel wide, don't worry about it. We'll be covering that in a moment. Now if your character has uh, different colored eyes than what the default is, go to eyes. Click on the color and set your color. I'm gonna go ahead and very quickly get my color. My character skin has a different eye white, like so, and we're good. Eyebrow, I normally just go ahead and get the hair color, and then we're good to go. Now, moving on. If you don't have a camera in your scene already, this is where a lot of people have many frustrations. Before you deselect the little guy, hit Shift-A, and you'll get this Add menu. Go down to camera and you can add a camera. Now you also want to hit shift A again, go to lamp and click on sun. This will add a sun lamp to your scene. We're going to go ahead and set this up right now because I already know what kind of pose we're going to be doing. If you know as well, it's always a good idea to get your light set up the way you want it. This will help you get your shadows right and all the rest of it in the future. Now rotation R to rotate freely. Our X rotates on the X axis. As you can see it's rotating only around that one. It's going the opposite way that the mouse is going, but that's fine. We're gonna get to about there. R Y goes in that direction, obviously. R Z goes around that angle. So we got a nice direction. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it further, and we're good to go. Now, most important, over here on the side, the materials tab is now changed to a sun tab. Very, very important that you're in this. Go down to strength, change it from one to three. 
One to three. Got it? Good. Moving on. Go over here to your world tab. Hit ambient occlusion. Turn that on. Click on this and hit point two. That's going to be very important in a couple of minutes. Now, I'm going to quickly show you the difference between point two of ambient occlusion and no ambient occlusion in your scene. I'm going to go back over here to my render and I'm going to have my samples down to 50 for this little test. Actually, I'm going to drop it down to 20 so it'll be even faster. And I'm going to go ahead and render the scene. Now you see the camera's way out in the distance, but you can easily see that he's got very, very dark shadows. Now this is good if you want a little bit of realism to your scene, but it also makes it a little difficult to see the skin in certain spots. So we're going to go back over here to the world tab, turn on ambient occlusion, set the point to, and render again. And look at that. He's still got the shadows, but you can see more detail of the skin. How cool is that? Very, very cool. Now, we don't like the camera being way over there. How do we fix that? Easy. Say we want the camera to be right here. Control, Alt, Zero. Bam, camera moved over to us. Right click on the little dotted line, and you'll get some control over the camera. Shift F allows you to free move the camera. Wow, WASD lets you move around, perfect. Okay, let's get a nice little, little view of our character. Bam, right like that, perfect. There's your camera, completely moved from way over there to right there. Let's render the scene again and see how that looks. You can see it's zoomed in a little bit more because we're closer to the character. He looks a little bored. I would too if I was just standing there all day. Okay, now let's get into actually controlling this guy. A little complicated for some people. We have mouth controls here. Oh, right. <laughs> Almost skipped a step. If you click on the rig and in Blender, selecting is with the right mouse button. All of the bones, and yes, all of these are bones and guides and all kinds of other things that have to do with posing, are going to be highlighted in orange and you can't do anything with it. If you hit control tab, however, everything goes very pretty colors and everything is interactable. Hit A to deselect everything. Now let's go back to what I was saying. Mouth. These two on the sides are pretty much the only ones you're ever going to use to control the mouth in terms of expression. Gre select those two, hit G to grab them, Z to control them on the up and down axis, and if we drag them up a little bit, he gets a nice little smile. He's a lot happier now, because he's moving around. Now if we go down, we can give him a little bit of a frown, but let's turn that upside down. Give him a nice big grin, and let's move on. Now here's something that I've been seeing a lot of people doing in the group that I'm in. They have two pixel high eyes, but if we were to select this thing right here, which controls the height of the eye and also the position, we would hit S to scale on the Z axis, again by pressing Z, and we scale them up to two pixel high, they're way up here on the top of his head. Now for some people that would be great. However, a lot of characters have theirs down on this level. How do we do that? Simple. With that still selected, G, Z, drag it down. And as you get closer towards the bottom, if you hold shift, you get very fine movement control until you can set it right where you want. And that should be right about where the texture changes like that. On this character anyway. Bam, right there. That is the second pixel line. Perfect. But the eyes, the pupils are too small. Well, that's easy to fix too. There's this little controller out here, which normally you use to make the guy look around. You'll notice that as we have him looking around, it's kind of hard to see because of that big green one, but he can look all over. Cool, right? Well, let's hit Alt G to reset that to its default position. By the way, pressing Alt G, Alt R, or Alt S resets either the grab, the rotate, or the scale respectively. So let's hit S, Z while holding this, and then we can scale up the eyes to get those nice two pixel wide eyes. Great, but the mouth is too close. Well, that's easy to fix too. There's this little box in the middle of the mouth. Select that if you can, right like that. Sometimes you have to click it twice because there's sometimes something in the way. In this case, I believe it was this line here that was in the way. Hit G, Z, and you can bring it down. I'm gonna line it up with this line right here. See how it goes straight through, perfect. And now he looks a lot better. 
but he also looks like a teenager, which I'm not. So we're going to hit Alt-S to reset the scale, Alt-G to reset the position, select the mouth, wrong one, right there, Alt-G, bam, we're good to go. Now you also have these fine little motor controls here. These ones on the top and bottom of the eye allows you to open and close the eyelid, and this is why I have a render skin. Normally, if I were to use my default skin, and I will show you this, select this little guy. Normally, if I have my default skin, we go right here, we go EC casual, image. If we were to try and do that this way, look at that. We got a little problem. The skin is showing the eye. That is why I have my render skin. And I recommend that you get your own render skins too. I'm having trouble selecting this guy because this is in the way. But it, you can easily switch back to your other one like so. Bam, we're good to go. All right, moving on. So you got those little motor controls. These also control, you can have droopy eyes and this controls the eyebrow. Let's give him a little bit more of an expression like so. Bam, there we go. Perfect, he's really happy now. Okay, moving on. What are these things? Well, glad you asked. This right here, say you have a skin that has a helmet or something, and you can't see the face. So you don't need any of these controllers. Well, if you hit G on this, drag it up, I hit F for some reason, hit G, it hides all of that. So you don't have to worry about it. And if you had a helmet on, it would be perfect. We're gonna go ahead and set that back because we like all that. Now this right here, say you're using the Alex model, which has only three pixel white arms. Well, that's what this controller is for. You slide that over, bam, three pixel white arms. Four pixel white, three pixel white, four pixel white, perfect. This, don't bother with it. It allows you to select the body, which you don't really need to do because that's what these bones are for. This allows you to see what everything will look like in render form. You'll see that everything has a nice curve. The mouth has a nice curve, really cool. Now, if you just slide that over, everything is all jagged and pointed. That's what that is for. Cool. So if you're worried about all the little points and everything, don't. This controls everything in render version. It's just because that's called the anti-lag control. It makes it so that you can't see those smooth curves, and it makes it a little easier on your PC or Mac or whatever it is that you happen to be using. Cool. All right. We got our, our facial expression set up. We're ready to do the pose, right? Well, almost. Last controller, this little guy right here. Hit G, slide him up. Bam, hides everything else. Now we get a better idea of what's going on with the main body. Sweet. Okay. Oh, and if this little guy is bothering you, just go ahead, go up into here, find your son, and hit this little eyeball button. Don't hit the camera, because we want the light to appear in the render. Hit the little eyeball, and it'll hide the sun away. Perfect. Okay. Now, positioning the body. This is how I do most of my things to make him look a little bit more natural. First off, bring him down a little bit so that his knees bend and drag his feet apart a little ways. Normally, I try to keep the feet inside of the green square on the bottom. You don't have to. Drag one foot back slightly, drag the other foot forward. Got a little bit more of a stable position. These two little orbs right here control the knees, which way the knees are pointing. I usually drag them up till they're about the same line as the knee and that allows them to have even more of a natural look. How do we improve this? Well, select this bone right here again, R, X, rotate him back just a little bit. Grab this one, R, X, rotate him forward about there. Not bad. Grab this, R, Y, bring it forward a little bit, R, X. Cool. Now, do the same on the other side, R, Y, R, X. Sometimes you gotta fiddle with it a little bit to get the right positioning. And then if we do that, we get nice position there. One thing I've noticed for in some animations that I've been watching recently is if you hit R, Y, Y, and you rotate these inwards slightly, you get an even more natural pose because believe it or not, your arms naturally rotate inward a little bit. So that gives it a little bit more of that natural feeling. I like it. So. Where is our camera? Way up here. Well, our character's not facing that way. Let's fix that. RZ rotates it towards the camera. RX brings the head up a little bit. Now he's kind of tilting his head to the side a bit. That's RY. We'll fix that right like that. Perfect. Now we got a nice, perfect position for our character. And with the light already set up, we can go ahead and simply render this. 
have it render really really quickly because of some of the settings that we've got I'll show you those towards the end of the video bam 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 and because we have everything in transparent renders really really quick nice and the shadows look good position looks good looks like you just caught him as he was walking along I like it all right cool so next step he's not holding anything why because we haven't added anything <laughs> this is where that other rig I was talking about is going to come into great help if we go file append and we're still in where we appended from the Black Plasma Studios rig. If we go back to our folder that had the Rimdenese rig, we got the Cycles version. Again, if you don't have it, link will be provided, or I'll tell you to go find it if you talk, if you contact me in Discord. You'll get into this menu here. Now, we want the item rig. The other rigs are for other things. Obviously, every block in the game up to 1.9, every item in the game up to 1.9. This is the Rim Denise character rig. I don't use it. Mob rigs, all again, up to 1.9. Some very, very, very limited mod support. Only like maybe a total of 10 items in there. Simple rig is a very, very simplified version of this rig. And then 3D, there's a couple of items in there that have been detailed even further. Like chests, I believe there's a bench, a backpack, a couple of other things. And I think, believe there's a pistol and a shotgun and a bucket, uh, enchanting table maybe, and a couple of other items. Let's go into the item rig, go into object, and what are we going to give him? Eh, let's give him a sword. Slide all the way over here to the swords. Let's give him an iron sword, because I like the look a bit better. And it came way over here. Now the reason for this is we basically copied and pasted it from one blender file to another. So it saved the position that it was in that. And all the other items would have been arrayed around if you, the item, like so. Let's drag this over, or Z to rotate this way so that it's actually facing the right way. We got G, Z to drag it down. Now it's in his arm. That kind of hurts. Let's drag it forward. Great, now he's holding it, except that it's still a little awkward. Let's rotate it a little bit more on the X. Let's go ahead and grab it, position it a little bit better. That's looking good. Now if we hit rotate it on the Y, we can rotate it that way. Drag it over just a little bit more. And he's holding a sword. I want to position this just a little bit better. Try and hide the brown of the handle if you can. Perfect. That looks great. And that's all there is to it. The repending items that have already been made from another Blender file. Yeah, very easy, huh? Uh, what if you wanted to import something like, say, you have a model of a lightsaber? Well, that's a little bit more difficult if it's not in a Blend file already. We're going to go ahead and give this guy... A lightsaber hilt to hold in his other hand. If we go to file and import, most models that you'll find will be the OBJ format, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now I have mine in my downloads folder. If we go here. We can do a generic, uh, let's do this one here. Import. Now this is going to import very, very big. Okay. If we Right click to select it, making sure nothing else is selected. Go over to its material tab, use nodes. This little button right here, image texture, makes everything black now. Hit open. Go back to the folder where you had the item and find the PNG file that goes with it. If you don't have a PNG file, you're gonna be in a little bit of a trouble because there's no textures for your model. Now, if you have a texture file, you're good. Just do what I just showed you, and you'll have your texture on your on your object. S to scale, drag it all the way down, all the way down, so that it's the proper size. It's still really big, like so. Drag it up. Now, you notice how the little orange dot is at the very bottom of the model. We don't want that. Over here on the on this little panel on the side, in the tools section, there's something called set origin. Click that, go to origin to geometry. Puts it pretty much in the center of the model, depending on where things are. Now we're going to rotate this on the Z, because in my opinion, that little green thing in the middle there needs to be facing inwards. Rotate on the X, rotate on the Z again to get it into pretty much the right position. And then we just drag it over. Like so, it's in his arm now, and it's a little bit small now that I'm looking at it. So we're going to go ahead and scale it up a little bit, like that. 
And there we go. He's holding a lightsaber handle. Now I'm not going to import the blade that model that I have that I made myself because it's a little bit... Uh, well, I'll go ahead and show it because the people who are watching this are probably only going to be from the one group that I have that I'm working on this stuff with. So let's go ahead and import Waveprint OBJ. Now this time I have to go over to my models section because I put that over here. And then my lightsaber blade. I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. Use nodes, image texture, open. We go to my materials folder. Should be this one for the green blade. There we go. But we want it to glow. Okay, that's a little bit different. Right here where it says diffuse BSDF. Click that. Go to emission. That makes it so that it's emitting light. Now it's a little difficult to tell. The texture did get a little bit lighter. Let's go ahead and hit the strength. Hit three. Now it's really bright. Let's scale it down. Scale it down. Scale it down. Perfect. Okay, now. Let's go ahead and select the tilt again. Drag it off to the side. Alt R to reset its position. Rotation. Or X 90 to make it sit upright. Perfect. Okay. Now we need to start lining things up. So again, origin to geometry. Drag it over till it's pretty much lined up that way. Over till it's lined up like so. Looks like it went a little bit too far. That looks good. Drag it up. Up, 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 up. That. Shift F to go into free view mode. This allows you to more easily see where things are. That looks good to me. Now we want both of these to move over at the same time. How do we do that? Select the blade, then shift, right click the hilt. Now you see this one has a darker orange outline. This one has a bright orange outline. If we hit control P, we can parent the blade to the hilt. Control P, object. Now we deselect and just select this. We we got a lightsaber blade that's following the hilt. Perfect. Let's drag that back over. Let's rotate it back around. Rotate it that way. And then rotate it this way. And that looks pretty good. Let's drag it down a little bit. Drag it over. I want to kind of have that little dot hanging outside of his hand. Now, that does look a little bit awkward, the way that it's holding it, right? Well, let's fix that just a little bit. I find putting lightsaber hilts at about this position in the hand is perfect for any Minecraft anime. Minecraft render, animation, what have you. Let's go ahead and scale it down just a little bit, like so. So that it's just inside the hand, but not completely. Let's go ahead and drag it to the middle of the hand. Perfect, I like that. All right, cool. Now we got a sword, a lightsaber. If we select the camera and hit numpad zero, we go into the camera view. Let's move it just a little bit. Let's move it over here a little bit camera and render that out how does that look well you can see there's a little bit of a glow around the lightsaber hilt this is where having a background would come in really handy because you could add an extra effect to make this thing glow even brighter uh, I might show that yeah I'll go ahead and show that it's really quick so let's go ahead and exit out of that let's go ahead and go down to the film tab of our render settings turn off the transparency and we're going to keep my sample i'm going to keep my samples at 20 and that's what i'm doing all my renders at for minecraft renders between 150 and 250 is where you want to be and then if you're still getting noise on your thing like you saw the shadows look really really awful see how they're all noisy and some of the textures are noisy if you Adjust this between 3 and 5, it'll pretty much get rid of all of the noise on your image and you'll be good to go. Now, we have the transparency turned off. Uh, I'm going to turn this from Hilbert Spiral to Center. We're going to go ahead and render it again. This will take slightly longer because it's doing a background now. So let's just let it go. And done. Now if we click here next to default and go to compositing, sorry, voice break, compositing, we're going to switch this over to render result. 
we're gonna hit use nodes and backdrop and drag that over here drag this over here shift a filter glare drag that up to that change that from streaks to fog glow turn this to medium turn the size up and it's not really you can if you zoom in you can see that there's a little bit more of a glow on it if we adjust the threshold a little bit will that fix the problem gotta wait for the compositing there we go that's a little bit better fiddle around with threshold size between high and medium uh, sometimes you can go all the way to low that's pretty decent but let's go to medium for this we're going to bump the mix up by one and let's turn the threshold to six actually let's turn it down to four but you can see that it's starting to make him glow so let's bump that up to five that's a good glow and if we if I make this high what does that look like that's pretty decent it's got a nice glow on the saber great now if we go back to default you can see that the glow is still there so then all you got to do image save your image as and you're good now this I don't believe that this system works with transparent backgrounds it might if you're lucky I have yet to be that lucky now another thing you see this random little white pixel right there you see a couple on the sword blade those are from reflectivity and that is what your clamping systems are good for now also if I were to turn my samples back up to 250 that would disappear it would no longer be there so it wouldn't be anything to worry about but there you go guys that's pretty much all I got so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope it was helpful hope you learned something and if you have any other questions those of you who know how to contact me can contact me on discord otherwise if this video is on YouTube which it may or may not be contact me in the comment section down below see you guys later farewell and safe travel